Hello, Jason. Thanks for joining us again. Hi, Steve. Yes, great to be here this evening. Okay, I think there was a, a couple of follow-up questions that a lot of people were interested in. And um, there was an update about the little thingy that we noticed on the hatch. And what, we weren't really clear on what that was. Yes, I was a little surprised to see that in 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 the in the fact that I'm like, oh, when I saw it, I was like, I remember that. And is it the latch? Is it a solar piece? But actually, um, it is an older piece of data that that didn't really belong there in the latest version. Okay. And it's uh, you know, forgive me, uh, as much as I said, oh, this is this is all the 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 CAD data, which that older piece is, but it doesn't represent the latest. And I sent you the the actual image. Right. So here I'll, I'll show, I'll show the yeah. image here. So this is the, the most updated uh, CAD render, right? Correct. And Correct. there is no little box here. Correct. And, and that little box represents probably the, uh, the, the little hook placement on the previous render. Looking, yeah. Looking back in some of the data, I went back cause you know, we, we, we update our design model every two to three days. Uh -huh. based on the latest and, uh, information. And I realized that one slipped past. That was a much older piece where the latch originally lived. And then when we extended kind of the tub, and uh -huh. the rear, um, but it, it was a mixture of the correct latch position, uh -huh. but an, older, an older prior um, hatch file, let's say. Oh, okay. So the this launch is now the final vehicle will not have this thing right here. No, it's, it's an artifact in data. It'll look like this and you can yep. see it in the the actual um, hatches that are being produced these are the physical hatches that are sitting over in italy right now correct well they're, they're hopefully they're not sitting they're actually being you know put put together and trimmed okay. and, and, and dialed in but okay. those are the hatches that came from the tool um that other piece is not part of the of the final right you can see the correct latch position here and in yep. here you can see it and there's no box in front here correct Okay. All right. Good. And so we yeah. had a couple of follow-up questions that people had in the comments. One okay. of the big ones was how does the, let's, let's go over to the swiveling action here. Okay. So this really cool swivel feature to expose the tire and the wheel, how does that function? Is there like a button in the UI or is there some, yeah. How, how does it work? How do, how does, how do people do this? Sure. Thank you. It is it is not released or you know uh, engaged from the, the the cockpit. You would you would have to leave the vehicle, and then there's a latch mechanism that you will be able to. It's kind of a two action where you know it, it it's not just a single single latch. You would have to do one thing and do the other, and then then the whole thing can pivot very easily. But it's not a powered feature. It doesn't you know you don't push a button and it automatically opens um, up. In the future, we could probably look at that, but mm -hmm. for right now, it's this is the most simple way. Is just there's a very robust latch mechanism. You undo one thing, flip it over, and then the whole thing can pivot. Right, and that's very important so that it doesn't accidentally come unlatched. Correct. Yeah, it needs to be strong enough. I mean, if you think about if you think about latches on uh, like aircraft and and watercraft and 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 vehicles where they go through all kinds of vibrations and bounces and everything. And they, they don't just fly open. We have yeah. the same thing here. Yeah. And I was thinking like, I, 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 one of my hobbies is rock climbing. There's like locking carabiners. It's like a two-step process, right? You like unlock it, then you unlatch it. Yes. And so it, it doesn't, it can't accidentally open because people would Very die if that happened. Perfect analogy for yeah. this. Yes. Okay. All right. And I think me personally, I think it's better to keep it simple because it reduces cost and it reduces complexity and, and Simplicity just, think, is 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 always the chase, right? Yeah. Because we, you know, if we if we go way out philosophically, you know, nature has the ultimate efficiency. Um, the solar powered machines that that nature makes, like trees, are the ultimate solar powered machine. Mm -hmm. and, and there's an efficiency in nature that that mechanically and mankind can only chase. But we we've got to keep always in mind, like, what is the most simple way to do this? Okay. And then another thing that many astute commenters and observers, mm -hmm. viewers noted was there seems to be a little gap here that doesn't exist in this back part, but there's like a gap from like here to here. And yeah, you can see it like from here to here. Yes. Uh, is that gap on purpose? Is it going to be there? Is this like a rendering artifact? 
It's not a rendering artifact. It will be there and it's by design based on the direction of the tool for the part mm -hmm. and how it has to ch transition for not only assembly, but how it, how it is able to be held onto the body uh, structure, the tub itself. So okay. that is by design. And what we, what we want to really focus on and what our, what our, um, what our manufacturing partner is, is extremely well versed in and that their expertise is what we call fit and flush. Mm -hmm. So they know how to make things fit and they know how to make things flush. So you don't have that kind of variation. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're going to have, we won't have the problems that, um, that a lot of metallic based vehicles have. Mm -hmm. um, it still represents some challenges with composite and what we're doing, but that again, I'm going to, I'm going to lean on the expertise and the, the, you know, CPC's excellence uh, along with the, you know, engineering ecosystem, they know how to make fit and flush so that you don't have divergent panel gaps and issues where the things are offset or not flush. So, you know, because remember, like Tesla got a lot of flack for having like panel gaps and and it's perceived like having these gaps are perceived as a quality control issue. So why didn't we make it flush? Is it just it can't be done or the actual groove like performs a function of some sort? Um, let me understand your question. Mm -hmm. The last part is it can't be done or. And then yeah, the like part is. Sorry? I think some people will be will be like, you know, Aptera is a very sleek looking vehicle and having any kind of gap kind of takes away from the sleek look of it. So does it actually provide some kind of function to have a, that that gap there? Or is it the way that the manufacturing and the part waking works that it just has to be like that? It's more the latter, but it's also, let me be very clear, it's not detrimental. Okay. Right. Okay. One of the things, you know, at, at one end, in my experience, you can have very minimal gaps, but it, it comes at a very high cost. Mm. And that's more traditional in um, plastics, but more so in metals in, in, in the automotive world. At okay. the other end, you know, the the ultimate is to, for me as a designer and working with the best engineers, is to design for the variances and gaps so that you don't notice them, but they're also not detrimental, both either aesthetically or um, any other function. You know, they don't let air or water or any any other issues in. But we've 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 done great care to manage all the fit and flush and all the gaps, and even push to you know go. To the edge or even beyond some of the tolerances which would normally be let's say acceptable mm -hmm. but we have an extraordinary product in a, in a unique you know uh, manufacturing system and we're very confident that our, our fit and flush and all of those things are going to be dealt with in a, in a really high quality way okay all right um all right and then is this wheel is that the actual wheel or is that just kind of a placeholder? Because one of the as questions was- As far as I know, it's 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 a it's a wheel that's the right size, 16 uh -huh. by, I'm not sure the, the width, uh -huh. um, but it is a 16 inch wheel. I don't know if it's forged or cast. Uh -huh. You know, we, we've looked at all kinds of rims. We want the lightest weight rim that works for our tire. It's a standard size tire. Uh, we, we're not looking to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as far as I know, this is CAD that that the, the design department didn't make. We uh -huh. were given this as like, hey, we have this wheel or we're, this is the wheel we're making. I see. Because what I was thinking is that's a nice looking wheel. It's like it would be a wheel that looks nice if it was exposed. But in an Aptera, it's not going to be exposed. No one's really looking at that wheel. Correct. And yeah. so, you know, like some of the really cheap cars have the, I don't know what it is, but it's like it's like steel, but it's like very it's like thin. It doesn't look great, but it seems like it's cheap. It's like the kind of rims that come on spare tires and stuff. <laughs> um, like, would that be cheaper and maybe, you know, help with the cost? Like if it, if it performs as well, it just looks bad. Um, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure the question, but you know, there, we always look at what is the, what is the most efficient way? whether that's weight or cost or usually a combination of two, what are the needs, you know, uh, engineering wise, like what are the parameters? 
Um, what is the, the manufacturability? Is it something that you're buying or is it something that you're creating? Uh -huh. I do know that, that, uh, that I don't, I don't recall that we looked at like a, what we call a steel wheel. Okay. Right? Cause I mean, if it's a significant cost savings and the performance isn't affected, I mean, I would think that that would be a good decision since we aesthetics would, don't matter on the it, wheel. Yeah. We would naturally make that call for the, you know, for the better of the product. Yeah. Okay. Um, a couple of other questions that people had was about the steering, the yoke adjustment. Mm -hmm. Does it adjust up and down? Yes. Does it telescope? I don't believe it does. Although okay. I can double check because I know that we had to choose um, and we had to choose a steering column uh -huh. and we had to choose the steering column based on what was available. Uh -huh. um, I know that we, we've looked at, you know, what it takes to develop a unique steering column, but that's one of those things that you're better off just going with something that you can get mm -hmm. because it's, you know, and then, and building kind of around that, but it does, it does adjust, adjust up and down. Whereas like you'll experience in gamma, gamma is a fixed column, right? But for sure our PI builds and our production will have a, a, an adjustable column to help the user kind of get the most comfortable position. Okay. Next question. Um, have you guys decided what film the wrap is going to be? No. Okay. That has, that's still being decided. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's see here. I think that's about it actually. Now you mentioned that there were some things that we didn't notice on this. Is there, is that something you'd care to comment on at this point? Um, I, I can't air you know, in video. Yeah, keep in mind we're going to do Aaron two where we're up with the hatch, and we'll which show you're going to talk about the third wheel in that Aaron two yes. video. Okay, because that yeah. was the that was like the one of the more common comments. Are like, well, that's great. How about yeah. the rear wheel? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we we expected that to come right away, but that's you know, it, there's there's enough stuff to put into Aaron two and maybe even Aaron three. Okay. Even though it might not be so much air in, mm -hmm. but it'll still be like a third in the you know feature series. Let's say. I see. Um, uh, I think a little bit maybe, and maybe this is part of of the three is a little bit around the the front wheel pan. What you know, we have an obligation to demark, and we have a reflector. So some of the some of the um, form and the language around the reflex on the front wheel pan has changed. Okay. And um, what else would be in that? We will we will talk about the you know air into the third, okay, uh, mm -hmm. the third wheel in, the, in this in the rear rear skirt, and it is you know you, as a user as in for serviceability there will be an there will be an opportunity to remove the rear skirt, but for okay. putting air in it it won't it'll be a much simpler operation. It'll be very you know clean, let's say. Okay. And remember, there used to be a, a logo in the front of the vehicle, and that was removed. Yeah. Is there any thought of removing this logo in the in the in the B pillar? Um, thought of removing the logo. Yeah. Some people were like, maybe we should not have any logo because it just it it you know the the car itself is the logo. There is enough strength in the brand of the vehicle, uh -huh. um, but I think we we uh, we made the decision to kind of put the lighted element as a, a unique sig signifier also. Okay. All right. I think that was most of the questions we have. Oh, well, there was one question about, and I, I, I think this is probably something you guys hadn't decided, but someone was wondering if Aptera is including charging cables with the vehicle, you know how some cars come with the little 110 charging? Well, like a connect? 110? Yeah. If it comes with it, is it going to have some kind of like foam insert that it, like it fits snug in the bunk or something? <laughs> um, that's something that we've absolutely thought about. Like, where do you put that that extra cable? Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's there's lots of way to do ways to do things that are like, uh, that I would call like creative packaging. Okay. You know, like uh, how do we, how do we give you the opportunity to not only accessorize and, and have places for this, but what are the things that would come the, with the vehicle that were creatively packaged? Mm -hmm. And I, I did, um, I recall that I, I did not give you a grade, but uh, on your review. Oh yeah. Let's get a grade. I, I think you were like North of 80%. So what is that? It's what a solid that? B. 
solid B. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Solid B. All right. Yeah. Unless we're grading on a curve, and then you know, there's only one. So. I don't know. I'm not good at math. I would have to understand what that means. Um, okay. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for taking the time to clear that up for us, Jason. Yeah. Now, now we know that, for sure I, that that yep. little box is not on the hatch. And now we do know what the hatch looks like. Yeah. And I, I think you were gone, but right afterwards when, uh, you know, after it published, I was like, oh, geez, let me look at that. And then I realized like, first I went to the, um, the actual photos of the parts that CPC made. And then I double check the data and cause we get, we get a data release two or three times a week, let's uh -huh. say as we collaborate and, you know, we're, we're not always in sync. Let's say there's always a little bit of lag and back and forth, but yeah. it, 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 the process is working, you know, extremely well for the benefit of both, both parties. Okay. All right. Well, thanks Jason. I'm going to let you get back to your family. I know it's late. On not a, a problem. I look forward to night. When we do, uh, when we do Aaron two, and then you do your review, we'll do your review of the review. Sounds great. All right. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks All everybody. Right, good night. Take care. Uh -huh.